Sarah, you've got a, a private member's bill that you're introducing tomorrow when Parliament returns. What is that? What, what's that about? What's it going to aim to do? Well, well, one of the key things this will do is actually help to give a, a, a guide to the plan that we need to get to um, those targets in 2050 because um, you know, all very well and good, we need those targets there because we have to keep temperature uh, rise below uh, 2 degrees or 1.5 uh, degrees, um, if we believe what and accept uh, those dire warnings of uh, what scientists are suggesting. We need some steps to get there. And one of the key things we could be doing is stopping um, the climate change and pollution getting worse. We've got a lot of work to do to reduce carbon pollution. Um, we've also got to stop making things worse. So this bill um, will build into our environmental laws a climate trigger. You'd be surprised, Shari, to know, and I think lots of Australians are, that our current environment laws don't allow for um, big projects, whether they're mines or uh, oil drilling or big land uh, clearing projects, to be assessed before they're given the green tick of approval for their, uh, the impact that they're going to make to the climate. Uh, what I thought there were environmental uh, approvals before. Have? I thought there were environmental approvals that the federal government was required to give before major projects were built. Yes, except that none of them include the impact on climate change. Uh, none of the current laws include um, an assessment of how polluting these projects are going to be and how uh, so much worse they're going to make climate change. Is this a bill you're likely change. to support tomorrow? Uh, well, th th that's going to be a matter for the Environment Minister uh, to make those final decisions. So, uh, but certainly we consider all policies on their merits and the government will come to, come to a position on this. But when it comes to uh, the work we are doing and we will continue to do, uh, we've got a plan, we're laying it out, we're getting on with it. And with all due respect to the Greens, uh, the Greens rarely think uh, about uh, when you're having action on things like climate change, what the actual impact impacts are on jobs, what the impact is on the economy. Uh, that is incumbent upon us as a government uh, to be doing and that's what we'll continue to do. But we always consider uh, on their merits any policy proposals that are put forward. I look forward to the debate look, tomorrow morning. It'll kick off and, and hopefully we can thrash out some we'll, of these issues. Then. We will watch it. But look, I just want to ask you both about IR reform. Christian Porter is uh, introducing new legislation that looks to criminalise uh, companies that underpay and exploit their workers and to further publicly name and shame them. The problem with this is that in the vast majority, 95% of cases, uh, companies do not intend, they do not deliberately underpay workers and we've seen evidence that there is just as much overpayment as there is underpayment. The problem is the complexity of the system at the moment. Uh, Zed, does Christian Porter have too much on to actually tackle IR reform when he's already dealing with religious discrimination, where he's dealing with, uh, he's a leader of, of government business in the House and uh, he's got media and intelligence laws to look at as well? Uh, no, he doesn't have too much on. I mean, he's got a big load and he's very, very capable of uh, fulfilling uh, that load. I mean, Christian Porter is one of our absolute stars uh, in the government. He's an outstanding minister uh, and is well respected uh, right across the party and beyond. So, well, he's no, not he's addressing the underlying up. problem with, with these underpayment uh, with the underpayment issue, you know, you've, you've had companies like Qantas, ABC, Woolworths, Coles, West Farmers, everyone underpaying their workers. Uh, you know, this shows there is a, a, a real endemic problem with the, with the system. Well, it, it, it shows uh, perhaps that some of these large businesses, uh, which have spent a lot of money campaigning on all sorts of issues, haven't spent perhaps as much uh, money on making sure that their payroll is up to scratch. So I don't accept that every time that, that when a large business like Qantas or when a large organisation like the ABC fails to properly pay its workers, uh, that that is all the fault of the system. Uh, you could easily make the argument uh, that large companies like that should easily uh, be able to get their systems in place to make sure that workers aren't underpaid. And when Christian Porter talks about uh, laws going forward, uh, he is talking about uh, systematic and deliberate uh, underpaying of staff. There are penalties in place uh, when staff are underpaid, but big businesses should be able to get their act together in order to pay their staff properly. Well, I think this could be a case of where politicians have absolutely no experience in business and so they don't understand 
understand, uh, you know, the, the processes when it comes to actually paying staff. Um, there are 122 awards. Uh, Sarah Hansen Young, you know, <laughs> these big companies, um, contrary to what Zed just said, these big companies like Qantas and the ABC and, and others uh, hire specialised firms to try and work out what they should pay their staff. And they have teams mm. of lawyers doing this. And even these specialised firms, even these lawyers, can't work out the correct pay because it's so outdated and complicated. Well, look, there is clearly a problem that is um, becoming more and more widespread. And that's one of the reasons why the Greens have uh, called for a Royal Commission into uh, underpaying and wage theft. I think what we've got to be really clear about is understanding why this is happening and what we need to do to fix it. The last thing we'd want um, is uh, responses that uh, suppress wage growth because um, the economy is in a pretty bad shape right now, Shari. It was bad before the bushfires and the coronavirus. It's in an even worse situation now. That's why the government doesn't want to talk about uh, the big issues because they don't want to take responsibility for the fact that the economy is going down the toilet right now. Um, the last That's thing we need... not true. We, the last, simply not The true. last thing we need is for um, some knee-jerk reactions that would uh, suppress wage growth even, even more. We need to make sure well, that people get Sarah, paid... you might be uh, surprised. ..what they deserve to get paid and that the economy um, continues to, to um, have some strength back in it.